All right, guys. In this episode of Garage Time, we are going to be installing this fluid dyeing radiator in my 97 GTS. So stay tuned. I'll show you how it's done. All right, so this ain't my first rodeo when it comes to installing radiators and vipers. Um, this will actually be this car's fourth radiator. Um, first one went out somewhere around 2005, something like that. Put an aluminum radiator in there. I don't think it was a fluid dyne, but after a couple years of running it, it sprang a leak. And I pulled it back out again, took it to a shop, had it um, sealed, and when I installed it, it never ran the same again. It always ran a little bit hot. So I think some of the tubes might be clogged up when they resealed it. So uh, this car is still running hot, even with the new engine in there and the proper clearance and all the bearings. So it's time to replace this borderline radiator with this new one. And uh, first thing is to get the yellow part out of the way so we can put the hood in that garage space. Got this uh, fluid iron radiator through Row Racing, one of my favorite vendors. They've been around a long time, back when I was the local president of the VCA. And let's see how this thing looks. Oh, it's pretty. Front side, back side. All right, looks pretty good. All right, let's take the hood off. Okay. All right. Okay, so we got four nuts. One, two, three, four. We got to remove. So, as you can see, I had a little moving blanket laid out waiting for us. And uh, that'll make the uh, nice little home for the hood for the next day until we can get this thing back together. All right, well, once the hood's off, you gotta get all this crap out of the way. So we'll peel off, off this breather out of the inner bypass tube. Get the air box off. 
intake air temperature sensor. Let's take these guys out. Uh, let's see, I'll probably take it off right here, the throttle body. Screws up front. Voila. Alright. Let's see if there's anything in this radiator hose. These are my spacer plate for my intake. It just helps to align that duct with the NACA duct on my hood. That's all I use it for. I just thought it was a little bit too far off from the factory. No big deal. So we got a bit of water in there still, so I'm gonna go ahead and drain the radiator to get the extra water out. Right. I'm just cleaning out my oil change pan because I do plan on reusing my antifreeze. 12 bucks a gallon, yeah, I want to reuse it. Let's make sure it's clean, we don't have any oil or crud in there. Probably got a brand new radiator. That's not too bad. Where are we getting? And not to jack the car up a little bit because my car is lowered. And this will not fit underneath there. This jack underneath there. There we go. Alright. And the drain valve is right down here. Give it a good twist. We might need a pair of pliers. Don't know if you guys can see this. It's kind of dark down here. Give it a little twist. And there we go. Draining the fluid. There we go. Draining the gizzard. empty, so I'm going to go ahead and pull this upper hose off. Shake, shake, shake. Just three shakes. Anything more, you're playing with that hose. And uh, we got to get this front bumper cover off next. Yeah, let's do that. The bottom uses 7 16 inch bolts, and this side uses 5 16 we got one, one, two, three, four, five here, and then five on the other side, and probably about ten bolts on the bottom. Comes off pretty easy. If this is the first time, we're gonna have a bunch of uh, push clips um, up underneath the front here, and inside the grill area, pop those push clips out. Try to be nice to them so you can reuse them. I've pretty much destroyed my push clips over the years. front bumper off again will give me an excuse to go ahead and pattern it for some glitter later on. That'll be a different video. I've been wanting to build this glitter for this car for a while now. I'll probably use something like high density polyethylene ACPE. I use that stuff for cutting boards for your kitchen. That stuff. 
strong, it's classic. Not too heavy. And make it's glitters. those four screws removed, this access panel can come off. Then we can try to wiggle out these pieces over here. There we go. That's your hood release lever. Okay. This is your AC condenser. So we'll have to kind of, kind of pull this out of the way so we can get to the radiator. We're going to pull these plates off. I don't need those anymore. Okay. metric stuff. Sorry for kicking the stuff around. Alright, so that's a tin. You want to be careful with these things here because you can break them off. Expansion tank kind of thing over here. Let me get this hose off. Ah, oh, easier said than done. There we go. Okay. I need to undo the lower radiator hose. For oh, that, I'm going to use these big old channel locks. This top one's kind of hard to get to with this brace in the way, but I don't want to remove that brace just to get to this thing. Let's see how I do it. Oh, there we go. That wasn't so bad. And then I got a clamp on the bottom as well. I may need to jack the car up for that. Alright, so. The lower hose is coming out. There we go. Let's make it on out of there. I'm gonna try to sneak this shroud out of there. There are four nuts that are attached to uh, some studs, some aluminum studs, so be careful with these nuts, don't over torque them. You have to disconnect your fan harness. Come on out. Okay, so 
We're gonna wiggle this thing on out. There we go. There's the fan module. Alright. Real quick, this is a uh, second design fan here. Uh, you can see it's centered pretty much right to left. The earlier design fans are offset to one side. Uh, some radiators will require you to uh, have this more efficient second design fan. So talk with your radiator manufacturer to see if that's necessary or not. Am I still filming? Okay, still going. <coughs> Let's see if this thing will come out. Here we go. Uh, oh, and more. Thank you very much. This one in the book. All right. So we got the old radiator out of there. Halfway done, right? Quick look at the old radiator. I said this is an aftermarket radiator. It's obviously it's aluminum. Um, you can see some crud right down in here. That looks like the areas. And right down here, those apparently were the areas that the radiator shop repaired. And I'm just curious if these bottom tubes are even flowing water at all. I don't know, I said it just hasn't been working as well since then. Oh yeah, and there's some crud up here as well. So who knows, these top fins may not be working either. But there's none of that with the new radiator. <laughs> Here we go, check this out. Ah, look at all this rubber. Rubber from the racetrack stuck in there. These are your isolators on the bottom. You got to pull these things off and reuse them. That one comes off pretty easy. This guy's stuck. I'll need a screwdriver, maybe. Ah, there we go. All right, so let's compare this one to the new one. All right, so here's the two radiators side by side. On the left is the new fluid diving unit, and on the right is the old one. Um, they both have the necessary bungs for the uh, isolators. Um, the old one has the welded in aluminum studs, whereas the fluid dime has thread certs popped into the uh, aluminum. So you can use a steel stud or maybe even a bolt. I guess it's up to you. Um, that might make it a little bit easier to get your radiator shroud in place. Uh, sometimes this shroud over here is like banging on um, you know, steering rack and all kinds of stuff trying to go down in there. So you don't, have to, you don't have to pull that shroud out and then drop it down. If you can just slide it straight down, this design might be slightly better. You can just use a, a bolt and a washer to hold it in place. Um, looks pretty much the same. Um, this has a straight edge on it, whereas the old one has is angled. We'll have to see if that's going to be a fitment issue or not. And the front looks about the same, just higher quality. So I said, I'm not sure where I got this one from. It's been so long now. But uh, let's check this shroud real fast. I want to see how this fits on the fluid dyne. See if we need to make any modifications. As you can see, I had to chop this a little bit to get the old one on there. Uh, slide that over. Oh, I'm going to have to modify this one too, it looks like. Alright, so right here I am hitting the lower outlet and these top bolts are not lined up. So I'm going to have to get on my Dremel and modify that a little bit. No big deal. Let's get her done and get this thing installed.
Uh, well, I got some quarter inch bolts and some fender washers, and I'm going to try this radiator in with the shroud. I just want to see if this thing will slide into place in one piece. I don't know if it will or not, but let's give it a try. Okay. Yeah, one thing to note about the setup is that there is a gap along the side here. Uh, when this fan comes on, it's going to suck air through the radiator and through the side. It's real tight, top and bottom, but both sides have a decent sized gap that really should be filled in with some foam or something. So I'm going to look around and see if I have anything. Well, I found some of this self-stick foam. This is like uh, the foam you put around your door to help keep out grass and stuff. Um, I'm a little short though. That's what she said, right? I don't want to hear it. So, I'm gonna have to make a little run to Home Depot and buy some more of this stuff. Because it looks like I'm going to need a strip on the radiator side and a strip on the fan shroud side to make sure I've got to get a good contact that will seal up. I'm trying to drop the radiator into place right now. Those isolators have to fit down into that frame rail. But my fan is hitting on the sway bar. So I either need to take this shroud back off or drop my sway bar. I think it'll be easier just to take the shroud off. So let's do that. It's a lot lighter without the fin shroud, that's for sure. Right here, it looks like my radiator is going to hit the plastic, I don't know what you call this, it's kind of like a shroud. I don't think it's going to slide in there. Don't think it's going to slide in. So the problem we're having is this piece of plastic here is part of the big front plastic assembly. It goes underneath the headlights and around the side of the fender. It comes way up here on the sides. It's a big one piece unit. It's like 750 bucks from Dodge. So we don't want to screw it up. Um, it has these little notches here on the side to allow for room when you <coughs> fold the hood down. But we've got a lot of clearance here. Um, so what I'm gonna try to do is I'm gonna try to take a torch and heat up this plastic and see if I can't bend this out um, a little bit here. It doesn't have to be bent all the way to the edge. Uh, probably two inches will be sufficient because the radiator does stand off from this edge just a little bit. It doesn't flush against this plastic. Um, but this is some thick plastic. We don't want to burn through it. We don't want to melt our headlight assemblies. So uh, we'll go real slow and let's see how we do. Okay, here we go. It look, certainly looks like plastic. And it smells like plastic. I think it's plastic. 
was a little worried it might be fiberglass. I got pressed fiberglass. Smoking a little bit, it's fine. Alright, let's be a bit of a sock on an extension. That's an improvement. It's going to need a lot more though. Rinse, lather, well, I say lather, rinse, and repeat. There might be some kind of a fiberglass component involved here. And it certainly looks like there's fiberglass inside that plastic. So, yeah, so it's not bending as well as I would like it to. I guess that's started, but it's, yeah, you can see the fiberglass fibers over here. There's some fiberglass in there. It's like yeah, fiberglass injected with uh, plastic resin. It's a little different than traditional fiberglass. <sighs> I think I'm going to have to get the cutoff wheel and actually I'm going to get cut. I didn't want to do that, but I'm going to have to cut the shroud a little bit to gain clearance. Let's see the size of the window now. Get down in there. There you go. It's getting pretty big. Put a tape measure on there. Um, right around an one inch. You guys gonna see that? Right about one inch wide. So, using the fluid dyeing radiator. Be prepared. Just saying. Well, another thing here, gosh.
going back over here. All right, all right. This is the expansion tank uh, port, and it hooks this little rubber hose, which goes down here to your expansion tank. This thing is a loose fit. I don't like that. I don't think Fluidyne did a good job on that. Um, one of the things I am noticing about this radiator is that most of the fasteners seem to be standard, whereas most of the fasteners on the Viper are metric. So I'm betting this is probably like a, I don't know, quarter millimeter or something connector, hose connector. And this might be a 10 millimeter hose. That's about a two millimeter difference. So I'm gonna to try to clamp it. I'm gonna take the spring clamp off. And I'll put a hose clamp on there, but that is not ideal. Um, maybe Fluidon is making this radiator for race cars. I don't know, but I think they should try to stick with the metric. Uh, fittings as opposed to putting everything standard. That's my two cents worth. Okay, so the fan is on again. I'm going to install my upper and lower radiator hose because it is just about time to fill this thing with water. Okay, and the old 50-50, Phil is going back in. Now I've got these real racing silicone hoses on my bar. I like them, they're easy to clean. Plus they have this built-in air balloon valve. And if you don't know yet, the Vipers are notorious for trapping air right through here. So this allows you to get the, the air out. All right, well, I'm at a stopping point now. Um, I've got a oil leak in this swivel fitting here where the swivel is, and so I have to order another one of these things here. So uh, I'm not gonna put my bumper cover back on until I get this new fitting installed. To do so, I'm going to remove the hose from the engine. It's not a big deal. Um, if you don't need access to your oil cooler, then you don't have to remove your bumper. Uh, you can get to your radiator just by a couple of nuts here in front and pulling off the uh, fan assembly. Then the radiator it should pop right out pretty easy for you. So I hope this gave you some insight on what to expect when you're ready to replace your radiator. Um, this is a DIY job you can do at home. It's not a big deal. And uh, thanks for watching.